What is going on everyone Only Sports back with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Toronto Raptors trade that they made overnight between last night and today um, as it was a very good trade in my opinion for the Raptors. It's pretty mixed out on Twitter um, as you know and in the Raptors community but I do like the trade as the Raptors are bringing back Yaka Pirtle. And the reason I'm making this video so late, almost 24 hours after the fact, is because I did want to, um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of see what, exactly what the Raptors did for the entirety of the trade deadline and, and you know, kind of evaluate it based off of that. And I like I like what the Raptors did at the deadline. I personally, you know, if you watched my video on, you know, when I made the video about a week over a week ago on where the, do the Toronto Raptors go at the NBA trade deadline. I said I kind of would have liked them to stay where they are at, maybe be conservative buyers, but I wouldn't be upset with whatever they did, you know, if they decide to sell or with whatever they chose to do, I would have been okay with. I would have understood whatever it was, and they decided to be, I think, exactly what I wanted them to be, conservative buyers, and they did add Jakob Pertl, um, of course, a center, and we were really lacking a center. So we fill this big time need, and I think that it's important. And um, yeah, again, we didn't have to trade much, right? Um, in th in terms of you know, in, in order to kind of win now, right, and and try and make a push this year, um, which is good. I like that. Um, you know, and obviously the KD move went down. I'm not gonna have a video on that. It's crazy blockbuster. You know, but um, the week got, or sorry, the East got weaker. I do think that um, at this trade line, the East got weaker, and I think the Raptors got better, which is good from a Raptors standpoint. I think the Nets were just a you know disgrace, big letdown. Um, you know, and they got a big haul back for that. So um, good for the Nets to get all that back, and I think it's a good trade for the Suns. But um, you know, the Suns definitely moving top two or three contenders in the whole NBA, and and definitely. They look like the strongest team, I would say, right now in the West. But as for Jakob Pertl, he is 27 years of age. Um, and he's going to be, in October, uh, turning uh, 28. So, you know, he's still got this season, and he'll be turning 28 at the beginning of next season. In terms of what this cost the Raptors, overall, it's a 2024 first-round pick that is top six protected and a second-round pick in 2023 and 2025 as well as Ken Burch. Ken Burch is a dump-off. Um, you know, the salary is pretty much offset, and we're getting a way better player in Jakob Pertl, who's 7'1", 250, compared to Ken Burch, who never played for us. But in 46 games, um, where Pertl started them all, he averaged over 12 points, 9 rebounds, and over 3 assists, um, you know, per 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 game, and um, he also averaged over a block, almost a steal, in 26 minutes. So those are pretty good numbers. I mean, when he gets to the Raptors, he'll probably be playing around 30 minutes a night, I would imagine, and you could probably see those numbers climb. Uh, you know, to probably 15 points a game with 10 boards, because we're a team that. You know, has a little bit of difficulty grabbing some rebounds. So we really needed a center. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're going to be getting that. In, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we're going to be getting that here in Jakob Pertl. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what he costs this year because he's a free agent um, that we do own the bird rights to. So, um, you know, it really doesn't matter um, that he is a free agent because it kind of just really offsets everything. And, Messiah doesn't make this move if his intention, if his intentions, um, you know, aren't to resign Jakob Pertl. He is a free agent bird, um, so which means you know the Raptors kind of hold, uh, you know, the control of him, and we kind of control what he does um, next year. So we can, uh, you know, we can kind of, <laughs> at the end of the day, we can kind of. Uh, dictate a little bit of what happens with Jakob Pertl. He'll be back next year, probably on a three-year, you know, I'd say $50 million deal, something like that, in the neighborhood of probably $16 million a year. I, th I feel like that's probably what he's worth. But it all depends how he plays here with us right now. If he, you know, kind of has a slow second half of the year, then maybe he's only worth 12 or $13 million. But 
of course, coming off of a three-year, twenty-six million dollar deal, you got to think, you know, you'll probably be making a pretty good increase um, compared to that. So probably about three years, forty-five, three years, fifty. I feel like that's his market, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen million a year. But we'll we'll cross that path when it comes. We have a busy off season, a big time off season, and I like that Masai. Um, you know, here at the deadline stand, Pat, I think it makes sense. You know, I, I think bringing in Pirtle is a big need. We've wanted him for a while, and he'll be a long term piece to this team. Um, you know, one interesting quote from Masai is that you don't build your team at the deadline, you build it through the offseason. And he was right about these same trades we could have made now, we can make him in the offseason. So I respect Masai for that, and I like what he did. At the end of the day, though, um, I like where this Raptors team currently sits. We're 10th in the East, um, you know, and we have a soft schedule coming up. I've been talking about the soft schedule for some time. I said this is where it kind of starts to get easier. The Bulls, you know, at the time of me filming this video, there's five minutes left. They're down eight points, you know, to the Nets. They'll probably drop this game and we'll be half a game behind them. Um, you know, and then, you know, we play the the Jazz tomorrow night at home. So we should win that and, you know, be tied with the Bulls for nine. And then Atlanta, who's, you know, been up and down, um, we're only a game behind them. So we're in a good spot right now. I think we're in a good spot to kind of compete, try and see where the season goes and hope for the best. I like where the Raptors currently sit. I really do. And, um, you know, I, I think Masai, and, and an important thing that people don't realize is why doesn't Masai just do it, just do it. You know, if, if you give people the impression that you're just going to, you know, sell for any price. And I, and I said this back um, in the, you know, two, two uh, trade deadlines ago at, at the 2021 deadline when we traded Powell but not Lowry. You know, teams are trying to, con you know, continuously budge you down. Um, you know, what, what does that do? It makes everyone around think, you know, we're, this guy, he says this is his price, but we can get him down this much. Masai's not going to let his reputation have that, and that's why he didn't do much at the 2021 deadline. That's why he didn't sell anything here now. Um, you know, he's totally right with, you know, what he said about he can trade OG, he could trade, sign and trade Van Vliet, same thing for Trent in the off season. you know. So I love what Masai's done here with the Raptors and anyone that says the Raptors franchise in front office doesn't know what's going on in this organization. Um, you know, uh, you, you guys need to, um, you know, just relax and, you know, we're in really good hands here with Masai and Bobby Webster. I'm really happy with this team. And as for the starting lineup, I think Yaka Pirtle slides into it at the five spot. You probably got Barnes at the four, Siakam at the three. Um, but it's kind of interesting how they would do it, actually. Maybe they put Barnes at point and Van Vliet at shooting guard, and, and Van Vliet's kind of just the ball carrier. I don't know how they they would do it, but it would be Pirtle at the five, and then I think the other four stars would be Pascal, Van Vliet, obviously, um, OG, and Barnes when everyone's healthy. Trent probably slides at the bench with Boucher and, um, you know, Chua, and that's a pretty good unit there, Thad Young. I, I think we have a decent bench unit. I think we're going to see a little bit more of them here in the second half. They played some good quality minutes last night. You know, Boucher's been on a heater lately, so has, uh, has a Chua been, and when we get OG back with Pirtle, this team could be a team that teams don't want to play in a first-round series. You know, so I like where this Raptors team currently sits at, and I'm happy with Masai and the front office and this organization and where they've taken us, and I like our future. But guys, also, that's all I got in this video. You guys let me know down in the comment section your thoughts on this trade. I like the Acapurtle trade. I like what, what the Raptors did at the deadline. You let me know what you think about them staying where they are and kind of being conservative buyers at the deadline. Let me know all the good stuff down in the comment section. And as always, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see you guys on the next video. And as always, let's go Raptors.